Welcome back to another episode of Sal and Pal's Stay at Home and Watch Movies. I'm here with my friend Tuli. Say hi, Tuli. Hi, guys. And today we're going to be reviewing Midway. And just fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. The story of the Battle of Midway told by the leaders and sailors who fought it. Since December 7th, the anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor is coming up, I felt we should review Midway to shine light on a historical part of World War II and the faces of war. Let me start off my review with my pros. First pro is the cast. We got big names and we got big talents. These talents really brought these historical figures from my school textbook back to life and really got me into the movie from Pearl Harbor to Marshall Islands to the Doolittle Raiders to Midway. I enjoyed how they showed you the lead up to Midway not just like other films that might just focus on one battle or one shift lead. This film covered basically the whole Pacific battle and I say whole in quotations because politics and other stuff did play part in the battle of the Pacific but this film focuses more on the fight and war aspect of the Pacific. I do believe they did try to fit in as much real facts of the war as they could like the faulty torpedoes to the repairs of the USS Yorktown this will bring me to my cons like I was saying this film tried to fit as much accurate information but did miss some targets for example Halsley's skin problem was not shingles but eczema and Yamamoto when he said I fear all we have done is to awaken a sleeping giant and fill him with terrible remorse this has never been officially confirmed by historians nor no one who was close to him to heard him say it. My next con is at the beginning of the film, during the attack of Pearl Harbor, the special effects and the color tint was different than the rest of the film. Also, when Sully was on fire at the beginning of the film, during the attack of Pearl Harbor, the special effect with the flames, they seemed to me like they were from a fan-made film, a little low budget for my taste. Eventually, they got better, or maybe I just ignored them as the movie progressed, because the story developed furthermore after that. My next con is I understand the film isn't a historical military documentary, but it did show some scenes from the Japanese side. I just felt it was a bit skewed to make the Japanese look like the really bad guys. I say this because the film Tora Tora Tora, another film that focuses and tackles the attack on Pearl Harbor, did include the idea that some historians have felt that the Japanese did try to declare war before the attack on Pearl Harbor instead of it just being an unprovoked attack which is what led Yamamoto to withdraw to his room after the attack on Pearl Harbor depressed because he knew what this attack would mean if it was an unprovoked attack. So I feel this movie could have been a bit more neutral since at the end of the film it is dedicated to both American and Japanese sailors who fought in the midway and it says the sea remembers its own. So in closing there is nothing glorious about war just ask anyone who's been through one. We watch these movies to understand our past to not make the same mistakes in the future and we just watch these movies sometimes for the actions but once we see it we understand the deeper impacts that these battles have played into these people's real lives and what they cost nations so with that i will pass it on to my friend Tuli and see how he saw this movie and what grade he gave this movie I'm going to review this movie from a different light than Sal did, where he included some historical references or lack thereof. I'm going to look at this movie more from like an entertainment perspective, and I'm not doing this to downplay any of the facts that the movie was able or not able to capture because I'm not a historian. I don't know all the details that happened during the actual event that they could have taken content from, so I don't want to misspeak on that, so I'm going to talk about this film more from an entertainment factor kind of like how I do most of the reviews here anyway so I do like the cast it's a very strong cast and I would assume it contributed to the cost of the film to go alongside the many special effects that took place in this film in which I was okay with the sort of camera shots we get you know getting like that sort of first person perspective from the cockpit going down you know very intense stuff and the attempt to develop these characters and sort of give them scenes away from the battle and sort of see how they're feeling about what it is that they're doing how they feel about loved ones to try to strike a balance in some way but I personally don't feel that that balance was struck enough to allow me to feel invested in a lot of the characters such that when these characters are actually engaged in battle that if something were to happen to them I would feel some sort of strong reaction to you know a sense of loss a sense of pain for 
for their loved ones. So again, for me, with the lack of the sort of development that will lead up to these big dogfights or these attempts to take down the carriers and, and whatnot. And this is from both the American side and the Japanese side. And I could even include the, the mini subplot with the Chinese that were involved in this film too. It wasn't enough for me to get on any of those sides. It felt kind of, I was just viewing this movie and kind of knowing what the outcome is and just expecting that as Sal kind of pointed out, we just learned something from this, you know, that war leads to these sort of devastations. It leads to strong reflections of you know, how the characters were involved in this, how they react to it before it all happened and how they reacted after the fact. I think for me, a comparison I'm going to kind of draw this to is Star Wars in a way in that I found that Midway, again, given the scope of what it was trying to do and capture, that's fine. But in terms of the storytelling, I felt the formula in Midway in terms of like the battle and the conversation was too repetitive in advancing the story in that they presented a battle and then there was some downtime where you had people talking to one another and then eventually led to another battle. Whereas, you know, a movie like Star Wars, I mean, I'm just using this because I personally find like the dog fights in space in Star Wars to be epic just as well as, you know, what I saw in some of the battles in Midway. But I'm just saying because I didn't get that formula in Star Wars where, oh, here's a dog fight and then here's conversation and another dog fight. It's normally, oh, here's Star Wars with their story and then towards the end, here's this huge dog fight in the sky or in space. I think that formula works better for me because I know that by the time we reach this battle that a lot of things are on the line and that I'm not expecting anything this grand to happen after this. So whatever loss that takes place in this battle, it's going to really drive in the home of you know the characters who were involved with, the sort of loss and wins, if you want to call it that way, uh, that are going to result from this epic fight. It just got a little repetitive for me in Midway, the formula. And this is no knock on the historical aspect of it. I know that, you know, many battles would have taken place. But in terms of like the storytelling, I would say that it kind of hindered on the development of the story and the characters and the build up to what would have eventually been the climax of the film. That's sort of like my take on it. And I would say that's probably my biggest criticism of the film. I guess in addition to the screenplay in a way, it kind of worked hand in hand with the storytelling, with the dialogue being not as strong as I would like it. Again, just to be invested in some of these characters. I feel like if the dialogue was stronger, that yes, I might have gravitated more towards a particular character. It it just wasn't enough to get me like extremely on board on either side. And I think because of that, and again, some of the points that I made uh, before that too, I'm still going to give this film a 6 out of 10. Like I said, I I like the cast. This cast was strong and the effects were all cool but it was missing the typical stuff that I would want in this story and how the characters would develop over time leading to this climax and whatever happened in that climax and I would have some sort of reaction to the characters who were involved. But in terms of entertainment, I mean it was intense. The battles did keep me on board but the repetitiveness of the storytelling did get dull over time so I would say that's like my biggest complaint. See, I see your point about the formula being repetitive but then I also see that it's tackling a bunch of little battles and I see it from your point of view that it seems a bit scattered and it's not really focused on one path that leads to the climax like you said but overall I'm going to see it from the historical point of view it does hold water and it basically I would recommend this over the movie Pearl Harbor by Michael Bay but if people really want to dive in more into the historical facts and stuff like that I would suggest they watch Torah 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 or they watch the documentary The Pacific. But if you want a little mix of action and a little bit of history in there and you're not really concerned about one or th- over the other and you just want to enjoy a film, I would say this is probably one of the recommendations I would recommend. One of the characters that I really enjoyed in this movie that really stood out to me was Bruno Guido, played by Nick Jonas. And the reason it stood out was because his story is real and the way they portrayed him, everything about him was accurate. Once I found out about him, I tried to look up a little bit more and it, to my surprise, they were fairly accurate with that character. So I'm going to give this movie a 7 out of 10. I guess that does it for this review of Midway. Please join us next time when we're going to review Scoob. I mean, Scooby! Middle name? Dooby? Last name? Do. All right. 
Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can find our social media links below. And like always, keep watching movies.